why you should play farming simulator stick with it there's a lot of compelling evidence and at the end of it give it a go ever wondered what this farming simulator thing's all about ever thought it's a bit sad bit nerdy not for you you'd be amazed how many people have jumped on had a go thinking it was a little bit silly I'll just see what it's like and become absolutely hooked. In the crazy, busy, frantic world that we live in now, this may be just the sort of game you are looking for. You might not know you're looking for it, but it might be the game that hooks you. It has done for so many people. If slow and steady is not your thing, don't worry, we got you covered in this as well. I'm going to cover a few areas of Farming Simulator, what it involves, what it entails, what you can do, and I almost guarantee you're going to come out at the end of this. I, I actually I say I'm going to guarantee you'll come at the end of this and think, actually, you know what? There's something on there I want to have a go at. There's no prior knowledge needed. You don't need to know about farming. You don't need to understand how it all works. You can go from incredibly basic, simple stuff all the way up to incredibly complicated um, productions and deliveries and equipment and all sorts of stuff. There's a lot of fantastic content creators out there that are making fantastic content tutorials and let's plays and, and all sorts of stuff regarding Farming Simulator. So if you get stuck, there's the Farming Simulator Academy that's available. Um, there are links in my description for the Farming Simulator main website. The company Giants Software make the game. Um, and there's a forum, so if you ever get stuck, you can go on there, you can jump onto most content creators that are making content on here, have got Facebook pages, they've got Discord servers, they've got forums, they've got, you can you can reach out to so many people. But like I said, the tutorials and stuff that are out there, myself included, if you get stuck, you can jump on, you can find out, you can always ask, which is another brilliant thing about it, so I'm going to put that out there now. I personally think the Farming Simulator community out there is among the best for any computer game going. So. I'm doing a little bit of just mulching at the moment, and it doesn't matter if you don't know what mulching is, that's absolutely fine. There are a whole range of things we can do in Farming Simulator. You can do arable farming, which is crops. You can grow crops, and there are a whole load of crop types, we'll talk about those in a moment, that you can do. You can start off by preparing your ground, preparing a seed bed. You can seed the ground, you can fertilise the ground, you wait for your crops to grow, you harvest your crops, and you can take them and sell them. It's as basic as that. If you want to do that, that's as basic as it gets. If you want to go more in depth, there's stuff for precision farming where you can go a whole step further and look at more sustainable ways of farming. Again, that gets onto more advanced stuff. But there's always a challenge. And what I like about this game as well is there's no end of level boss and there's no completion. This is one of those games where you can put thousands, literally thousands of hours in most bang for your buck of any game I've ever bought, I've ever played. There is no end to it. You will never get to the point where I've completed the game. This is not a game you complete. And that's a, another brilliant thing about it. If you've had a stressful day at work, a stressful day at school, if things haven't gone well, it's how I started out playing. I just put it on and you just... Everything dissolves away. You just focus on the farming, focus on what you're doing. It gives you a bit of time to organise your thoughts and everything just melts away. If arable farming is not your thing, you don't want to grow crops, what about animals? Turn your attention to animals, we can have a look at those in a moment as well, um, and they will produce various different things. Maybe animals isn't your thing. What about forestry? Fancy your hand at being a bit of a lumberjack, you can jump on there, do a bit of logging, and again, there's very, very basic, and you can go up to very, very advanced stuff with it. So let's jump in and have a look. Now, we'll start off with, where do I want to farm? That's an amazing thing about this game as well. The base game, as of the end of November this year, there will be six base game maps. However, there's a massive modding community involved with Farming Simulator. Mods pretty much being uploaded into the in-game mod hub. You haven't got to worry about what that is. You don't need to worry about that at the moment. Um, but there's new content being put out all the time. There are over 400 pieces of machinery in the base game, 100 manufacturers, and that's been improved on and increased upon almost daily by the modding community. So, as well as the base game stuff, there is so much more being put in, so much to choose from, so much to play around with. But again, that might be a bit more advanced for, for when you're starting out. You might just want to stick with the base game stuff. If I jump into here and show you, you've got a vehicles menu, we've got a tools menu, we've got objects, there's packs, so if you're not sure what you need, if you're new to the game, you think, well, I want to do some grapes or olives, or I want to do potatoes or sugar beet or cotton or animals, you can jump on and it will show you what equipment you need. 
You don't have to use that equipment. Again, you will find yourself that you will evolve with the game. The game will evolve with you. You don't have to go absolutely mad with it, but I guarantee you will. So to start off with, let's talk about maps. As I said, six base game maps, loads been added, and there are hundreds of maps available in the mod hub. You can farm in America, Canada, South America, the UK, Scotland, Ireland, Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, the Netherlands, Poland, Slovakia, Slovenia, the Czech Republic, Finland, Portugal, Norway, Greece, Australia, Switzerland. There are maps pretty much covering the globe. So if there's an area you want to farm in, there's going to be something for you. Whether it be the rolling open countryside of a state in America, or the lanes, hedgerows and stone walls of somewhere in the UK. Or the steep, hilly, logging terrain of a Scandinavian map. So as you've just seen, the variety of maps, um, the variety of terrain. If you want a challenge, go for something a bit trickier. Um, you want rolling landscape you might want flat open countryside you might want to do big big farming with big machinery you might not you might decide i want to go small and do small farming small machinery this is a game for all ages as well that's something i want to throw out there if you because it's not there's no violence there's no um and i, I think when you play with other people as well that's something you can do multiplayer can be done we'll talk about that in a bit as well um, there doesn't seem to be that aggression coming out because it's not an aggressive game and so if you've got kids or you've got grandchildren or great-grandchildren they've come over and they want something to do chuck it on I guarantee they'll love it I know people that are playing from very very young children middle-aged elderly it's available to everybody and that's another beautiful thing about this game anyone absolutely anyone can have a go at it I challenge you, I dare you, jump on, have a go. You will find something you'll want to do. So, that's maps kind of very briefly looked at, but there's so much to choose from. So choose your area, choose your map, and then choose your farming style. Like I said, we'll start, have a look at arable. So I was just doing mulching. When you've harvested a crop, you'll have stubble, you'll have crop left over. You might want to mulch. Again, you don't have to do all these steps. There's mulching, there's cultivating, um, preparing your seed bed. You might plough. Again, there's precision farming. That's a little bit more complicated, but don't worry about that. So you're preparing your seedbed. What am I preparing my seedbed for? I'm preparing it for the next seeding, the next sowing, the next planting, whatever you want to do. Now, if that's all you focus on, that's absolutely fine. You might want to fertilize your crops as well. There are stones that you can pull up when you plow and you cultivate. You might want to remove the stones. Now, that's something to point out as well. Don't panic if any of the stuff I'm saying, you're thinking, oh, it sounds too complicated. There are menus and menus and menus of options for turning things on and off. You can turn stones off. You can. There's weeds. You can have weeds that grow, and you have to either weed them with a mechanical weeder or you use herbicide. You can turn those off. There's so much stuff you can turn on and off. You can turn traffic off if they're on a map and the traffic's getting away. If you find it's too complicated, you can go through all these options, and there's tons and tons of stuff you can turn on off. We've got seasons with seasonal growth. So it runs through a, a growth cycle. You've got a planting season, you've got a harvesting season. And if you have seasonal growth on, I've got it on yes at the moment, there are only certain times of the year, if I scroll up, we can have a look at very quickly there. So in green is planting and orange is harvesting. So at the moment, I'm not in a season for planting, but I am for harvesting. So I'm going to, have to turn it off in a moment to show you. You can turn it off, you don't have to. It will still take a certain amount of months for your crops to grow, which is fine. If you haven't got time, if you're thinking, oh, I haven't got time for all that, don't worry, you can speed up time. In the settings, there's an option to speed time up. There's also a setting if you go to wherever your, your home is, there's a thing called a sleep trigger. You can jump entire days. You can set the amount of days per month you want to run. From one day up to a full month at 30 days if you want to run completely realistically play this game however you want to play it that's my advice have a load of fun doing it or play ultra realistically however you want to play it whatever your gameplay style is there is something for you to do so like i say you can turn stones off you can turn weeds off you can do various different things 
if you want to fertilize there are uh, numerous different ways of fertilizing your crops from spreading manure to chemical fertilizers to liquid fertilizers you can grow cover crops which you cultivate back into the ground if you want to go really organic again there's something for everyone so once you've fertilized your ground and you're ready for har uh, planting there's planters there's seeders of all different sizes of all different categories if machinery is your thing there is no shortage of it you're going to find machinery all day long there's so much stuff to actually have a go with now like i said i've got seasonal growth on so at the moment it won't let me plant because whatever i want to plant now i'm not in a planting window so i can turn that off if i want to bear with me a second so if my seasonal growth turned off it doesn't matter when i plant or harvest now it will still take a certain amount of months for each crop type to grow but what i can do now is plant my crop And we're good to go. Now, if you don't want to fertilize separately, there are certain seeds and planters that will allow you to plant the crop and fertilize at the same time. It speeds things up if you want to go down that route. Once your crop's in the ground, you've got a bit of time to wait for your crop to grow. But don't worry, there's tons of other things you can do while you're waiting for it to, to grow. If you don't want to do tons of other things, like I said, skip ahead. It's not a problem, you can jump ahead. Once you've got to your harvest point, we get out the big guns. Harvesters. And there are so many different crop types as well. That's something I haven't actually talked about. Let's talk about the crop types. Let's go to here. Over to the right. Wheat, barley, canola, oats, corn, sunflower, soybean, potato, sugar beet, sugar cane, cotton, sorghum, grapes, olives, poplars. We've got grass. You can grow grass. You can cut grass because you'll need that for feeding animals, um, for making bales, for all sorts of stuff. You can do bale, baling. That's another big thing you do. There's tons. Like I say, I'm just, this is just skimming the surface of what's available. Oilseed radish is a cover crop. You can plant that in the ground, then cultivate that. That's a fertilizing state. So you haven't got to use chemical fertilizers and stuff if you don't want to. Now, there are certain maps within the modded map community that add in other crop types on top of that there are new crop types coming in november to the base game we're going to be getting carrots parsnips and red beets on top of what we've already got in game when we get to harvesting run your harvesters over get your crop out the ground off the plant and you can just take it and sell it if you want to keep it completely basic it's that simple prepare your ground plant or seed get around to harvest season harvest and go and sell it if you want to do that but it doesn't stop there because with farming simulator 22 the latest version of the game we have what are called production chains so you can go even further with it like i said it gets a little bit more complicated we'll talk about production chains in a moment that's arable farming let's have a look at animal husbandry we'll start off with cows we've got cows in game the cow animations are absolutely fantastic. There are different breeds, there are different types. You've got cows that produce more milk, you've got animals that are predominantly beef animals. You can put pens down, pastures down. There are base game ones, there are modded ones, there are open pastures, there are big fields. Feed your animals, especially your cows. Give them straw for bedding. You'll get manure as a byproduct, you'll get milk. Your milk can then be just sold. Sell your milk. You've got cows, you've done your milking it milks automatically sell your milk brilliant over a period of time your cows will grow they will reproduce you might start off with a herd of two cows four cows ten cows when they reproduce your herd will grow in size you can sell the extra off you can keep hold of them and you can just produce more milk if you want to again i talked about production chains and the onward chain what we call downstream from this sell your milk that's fine if you want to do more with your milk you can we'll talk about that in a moment as i said there's plenty of barns and buildings and things now you can produce all the things you need to for feeding your animals in game by doing crops by um, making grass you can make hay you can cut grass and get straw for bales and bedding if you don't want to and you haven't got time there you buy it all you can buy feed you can buy bales you can, so you don't have to so again it's that thing of i don't have a lot of time to do all of this you don't have to if you don't want to Again, play the game the way you want to play it. If you just want to jump on and learn, have a go, 
I think it's a fantastic tool for teaching people, not just children, I think teaching people about farming, to learn about farming and what it takes. There's a whole process involved. Um, there's all the financial side of things as well. You can kind of learn about your finances. Um, your crop types and things are worth more at different times of the year. So when you've done your harvest and you get your crop in, you can work on things to improve your yield in game so you can get more crop from your fields by doing different things to improve your yield. If you don't do anything, your yield might not be as great, you won't make as much money, that's fine. The weather plays an important part in it as well. When you get round to harvesting, if it's raining the entire day or the entire month, you take a hit on your harvesting, your yield's not as great, or you wait until the rain stops and then go out and harvest. There's a lot of realistic elements to this. So like I said, you can buy feed types, that's not a problem at all. That's cows, this is all just very brief just to show you. Pigs! We can have pigs! Different breeds of pigs as well. The pigs will make slurry and they will make manure if they've got bedding and they reproduce. That basically is what, you know, pigs what they do. You can start with pig with all these, you can start with calves and you can work your way up. You can start with mature animals and they're already producing milk and will reproduce. The same with the pigs, you can start with piglets and you can work your way up. Now we move to our sheep. Now there are some mods as well. We've got sheep and guess what they produce? Wool! And we can sell our wool. Just take it off, sell it. Done. But you can do more with it moving down the, the, the production chains if you want to. Grass or hay is pretty much all they need once they've got it. Again, they will produce wool. Some mods allow you to do sheep's milk. So you can do sheep milk. Again, that's further on. Once you get into looking at mods and stuff, you can have a look and see what's available. So we get wool. We can do more with that moving down the line as well. We've got chickens chickens with there should be a rooster in there there's a rooster in there as well and they'll produce eggs which again take them off sell them no problem at all job done happy but you can do more with the eggs as well we'll talk about that in a moment too and then horses now, i don't do horses very often but i have to say i do like horses and with the horses what's brilliant about these if we go in and i'll go to my menu there for horses uh so we're down the bottom there i've got flash and cowboy that's the two I've got at the moment. There's a whole load of different um, breeds available. Um, but it does say at the bottom there, rename. So I can click on that and I can name my horse whatever I want. So if you want to name your horse, you can name it anything you like. And the brilliant thing with horses is they need daily exercise. They need daily riding to improve their fitness over time. They will become worth more money. But every day, jump on your horse. Take it for its daily exercise. You can ride around your map. Um, there are horse obstacles and jumps and all sorts of stuff available. Again, in the mod hub, there's different stuff you can do with them. It's entirely up to you. So you can do your daily riding, and you're aiming for 100% exercise for the horse every day. When you get back into the stable, you clean your horse, and you move on. And I have to say, the animation on the ho well, all the animals, I think, personally, is absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of stuff that's very easy to take for granted. But it's very cleverly done. So let's stop there. You can jump with your horses as well if you want to. Let's just sort of jump. <laughs> oh, it always makes me smile. So that's horses. Hop off, find my horse, clean the horse. <laughs> Fantastic. So if horse riding, horse ownership is your thing, and there's, there are transport um, trailers for all of the animals, so you can go and buy them from a livestock market, you can bring them to your farm, you can buy them directly at your stable. So again, depends how immersive you want to go with it all. There's a whole ton of stuff you want to do. So that's animals, and that's some of the things they produce. Now, if animals and arables not your thing, or you're off-season, you think, oh, there's other stuff I want to do. What about greenhouses? Fancy having a go run a little market garden? Base game greenhouses, we can do tomatoes, we can do, do lettuce, and we can do strawberries. Some of them just require water, and then you've got modded ones. There are so many different crop types you can do in modded greenhouses, watermelons and melons, and, and I mean, the stuff is endless. There are flower greenhouses, there are ones that do um, various different um, bushes and trees for topiary and that kind of stuff. So, base game greenhouses, you fancy have a go at greenhouses, you can, but again, tomatoes lettuce and strawberries these have an onward thing you can do with them which we'll have a look at momentarily talked about options haven't i there's so much i, I want to try and fit in um and it's hard to kind of convey it all um we do have if i go into our machinery and equipment and we go to for example where are we 
in here. Grape technology. So, if you want to do grapes, want to run a vineyard? Why not? Run a vineyard. You've got all the equipment you need for transporting grapes. We've got stuff for harvesting. Again, there's so much more stuff in the mod hub. So for harvesting your grapes, for spraying them, whether it's be if you've got weeds for herbicide or you want to do your fertilizing of them, grape trailers. We'll jump across there and have a look. Grapes and grape vines may be your thing. We can grow grapes and there are some fantastic harvesters. If I go into here and we go to grape technology and olive technology. So for harvesting, grapes and olives, which are in the base game. Again, modding community. We can have the olives grow like this, the same as the grapes do. But there are mods that do olive trees, so you can have olive groves. There are maps that have pistachios and almonds. There are fruit trees on some maps and some mods available, so you can do fruit trees as well. Have a go at that. Grapes and olives. There is, so, there is so much to this. But what if crops aren't your thing? If growing stuff's not your thing? Become a lumberjack. Have a go at a bit of forestry. Now this, again, for the beginner, may seem a little bit daunting. But it can be a very basic process. Buy yourself a chainsaw. There are loads of modded ones. There's even some axes. There's even a lightsaber, if you fancy that. Buy some land that's got some trees on it. Cut down a tree. But don't worry. If you're worried about the fact that we're cutting down too many trees, you can cut down a tree and there are planting options for replanting new trees and new tree types. You can plant three trees for every one you cut down. If you're worried about the environment, absolutely do that. It's a good way to replace everything. We can clear it all off, we can cut it into chunks, we can take it off and we can sell our lumber. We can just take it and we can sell it. If after a while you're getting fed up with just a chainsaw, we can move up to big machinery. Bigger tree harvesters. There are forwarders. There are whole maps which are just forestry maps. Jump on with your friends and do a whole forestry operation. Have a forestry empire. So take your lumber, sell it. That's great. We've got sawmills in game. You can take your lumber to a sawmill or to carpentry. You can turn it into furniture. You get wood chips as a byproduct, so you can do wood chipping as well. You can sell your wood chips if you want to do that. Part of the recent platinum expansion gave us the ability to make lots of other products as well. So if you want to go onwards, now's probably a good time as any, I think, to talk about the onward productions because I've alluded to them enough. We've looked at arable, we've looked at animals, we're looking at lumber and logging. If I jump in and we'll go to the menu here, I'll show you the various different goods and things that we can produce. We've talked about the um, crop types already. We've talked about a few of these. We've got eggs and wool and milk, wood chips we just talked about, wood, we've got grass, hay, straw, all these various different things. We come further down, we've got things like flour, bread, cakes, butter, cheese, fabric. So these are onward productions from just your base, basic stuff. But if we come further down, like I said, the platinum expansion, we can make planks. You take it to the, to the sawmill, put your lumber in, it'll make planks, and you'll get wood chips as a byproduct. Take it to the carpentry, you can turn those planks into furniture. Keep going further down, and as platinum expansion, we've got this. We can make armoires, barrels, bathtubs, birdhouses, bowls, buckets. We can make carton rolls, like cardboard rolls. We can make pet accessories. We've got the birdhouse, we've got cat trees, we've got chairs, dog houses, easels, floor tiles. There's a metal thing as well. Paper rolls, pepper grinders, picture frames. <laughs> Prefab walls, planks long, shingles, staircase railings, tables. I mean, the stuff you can do is incredible. Now, there is a map that came out as part of the base game, Silver Run Forest. Silver Run Forest is very impressive and very cool because if you want to do forestry and forestry, you think this is my thing, I'm into this. On that map specifically, you can provide all the raw materials to build a roller coaster. Over time, you build a roller coaster. If that's taking too long, there's also a boat building yard where you provide all the various different things, including fabrics for sails and metal and stuff like that, and you build a boat. And at a certain point, when it's finished completion, it will launch into the water and off it goes. Honestly, the mind boggles. It's absolutely incredible. So, again, very brief look. Logging, lumber. We can have a go at doing all that. So this is the cardboard and paper factory. 
So while I'm looking at all this, now it's probably a good time to talk about landscaping. If you've got a map, if you've got stuff you want to do and you're thinking, I like this map, but it's not quite what I want, have no fear. We can jump into the build menu. We've got the option here for buildings, sheds, silos, extensions, containers, tools, farmhouses, the productions we've talked about. We've got factories, we've got cell points, we've got greenhouses, the orchards. All the stuff is in here. We've got our animals. So anything you want to place anywhere on the map, you can place it. We've got decoration. Again, there are tons of mods. There's decoration in game for fences and lights and other there's sheds and buildings and all sorts of stuff. But you might decide, well, that's that's all well and good. You know, I've placed something down, but I don't quite like the way it looks. I want to add a little bit more to it. But under deck, under landscaping, which is another option, we can sculpt the ground. So we can raise the ground, we can lower the ground, we can level the ground. So we can lower the ground, we can raise the ground. Hang on. If I come across one we can level the ground. So if you've made a hole and you're happy with it, I can bring that across and I can level the ground back up again. We can make ourselves whole, we can set that up. Um, if we go to the next one along, we can soften it. So if you've got a, a spiky bit or you've made a hill and you want to round it off, we can round it all off. We can soften the ground. So you can change the landscape around you to fit whatever you want it to be. We've then got a painting option. So we can go in and depending on the map, we can put fields down. We can do animal muds and, and tarmacs and asphalts and forest ground and stones and concrete and dry grass and whatever you want to do if I want to add some concrete around my buildings because I want to put a road in we can add stuff in you can do landscaping so you can make every map what you want we can add in more trees we can add in plants depending on the map again if I decide actually you know what I want some more trees let's put some more trees in some maps won't allow you to if they're at their maximum but we can plant trees or we can put trees in so if that's your thing again you might think I want to plant trees because it's going to take ages to grow place them put a load of trees on if that's what you want to do so looking down my list what else have we got oh yeah the production chains so we talked about a few different things you can take your wheat barley oat sorghum and you can take it to um, a grain mill. The grain mill will turn it into flour. You can bring your flour to the bakery. But when you bring your stuff to the bakery, there are other things we can bring as well. If I click on here, we can make bread. Just requires flour. That's great. If we want to make cakes, we can bring flour. We can bring sugar. We can bring milk, eggs, butter and strawberries. And we can make cakes. If we go to the dairy option, I've got a dairy just next door. We can bring milk. We can make butter, cheese and chocolate. Great processing. So if you're doing grape vines, you can make raisins and grape juice. The greenhouses, we've got tomatoes, lettuce and strawberries. There are so many different mods, so many different productions, so many different things you can make in game. Again, once you start going down the rabbit hole, there seems to be no end to what you can do. I guarantee you'll find something. But even if you're still thinking, this is all just a little bit sedate for me, don't worry. We've got esports. That's right, people. We've got esports in farming simulator you can do bale stacking you can do bale stacking with your, just yourself you can practice doing bale stacking there's a whole lot of parameters you can change or you can play with up to well six of you five friends so six of you can play competitively against each other there's also the farming simulator league which is the farming simulator esport up until recently on pc you could practice it and play it if you wanted to but recently we had an update for console as well which means you've got esports practice you can play with three of your friends and three other people so three on each team competitively against each other and if you get to a point where you think actually we're pretty good at this if you like frantic if you like time limits if you like power-ups if you like all that kind of stuff it's going to be right up your street i'm going to put a couple of clips up in a minute just to show you it um that might be right up your street and if you get good enough enter a team into the fsl into the farming simulator league why not play competitively there are cash prizes there are things you can win if you can if you can travel some of them are online events some of them you can travel to actual events and take part if that's something you want to do set your own esports team up and have a go so i'll put a couple of clips up of that now
So tell me now at this point, is there not something for everybody in this game? And as I said, play the game you want to play it. Start with the basics. Once you've mastered the basics with various different tutorials or just learning, trial and error, however you want to do it, I guarantee you'll then decide, I want to go further. I want to try more. I want to do something different. You might start off just saying, I just want to do crops. And after a while, you think, actually, you know what? I wouldn't mind giving this a go. I might give that a go. A lot of people shy away from forestry. But you might think, you know what? I want to try those production chains. I want to make something else. I need to do a bit of forestry. So you might have a go at that. In all of these steps, though, there are mods and things available. So you can buy products. You can buy things. You don't necessarily have to. Because my thing as well is time. I understand that people don't have time to put in hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of hours. But, as I said right at the start, this is a game where you can get thousands of hours of gameplay out of this and you'll never run out of things to do there'll always be something new coming out there's always something new to do there's always something very cool now i had to talk, touch briefly on it when i said about um doing bale stacking and doing um esports doing the farming similar league stuff multiplayer if you want to play multiplayer if you want to play with your friends you can the base game does have a multiplayer mode which you can jump into and you can start playing with your friends in multiplayer. And we've got cross-play as well on Farming Simulator. So if your friends are on PC, one of your mates has got an Xbox and you've got a PlayStation. Doesn't matter. You can all play together on multiplayer. But whoever's got the, so the weakest of the three, it will run on their parameters. But if you don't want that to be an issue, why don't you get yourself a server? You can get yourself a multiplayer server. I run three off of G Portal. G Portal provides servers. If you're looking for a really great, um, a great priced product, um, they're not expensive to get. If you use my ref link, you can get a discount on a G Portal server. It's great customer support. Um, they run really, really smoothly. And because they're a separate server, it doesn't matter who accesses it or where you access from. It runs from that server. So I find they they run. I just, I'm absolutely brilliant. I can't say enough good stuff about a G Portal server. So if you want to play multiplayer and playing with your friends is a big thing you think you might want to try again, it's covered. You can play multiplayer as well. Um, there is so much more to this. This is, I say brief. I know I've been talking for a long time, but that gives you some idea of the complexity of the game, where it can reach, how much stuff there is available to do, and where you can go with it. I would urge you, even if you're watching this now, thinking, "Oh, this isn't for me," have a go. Give it a try. Come on, join a community that's constantly growing. I've been Mr. Silly P, and I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape, or form. You have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest, whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.